terms of general approach to immune related adverse events, I think the key thing is that um, results from increased excessive immune activity, what, how do we treat them, how do we identify that and I think it's important to understand that they can be severe or life threatening and may involve various or key principles of these uh, sort of immune mediated adverse uh, events management is, is uh, patient education is very important because any delay in referring themselves to the hospital can have significant impact on morbidity and mortality. There is continuous monitoring that is required, early identification is important, timely intervention will be quite important uh, as well as evaluation, uh, evaluating the differential diagnosis, thinking about uh, non-inflammatory etiologies as well as considering all signs and symptoms. So what you will be looking at, individualized patient follow-up and counseling is key as well as in cases where you think it is immune mediated adverse event, systemic high dose corticosteroids may be needed for severe uh, events. Tolerability of cancer treatment, so if we look at the IO treatments, chemotherapy targeted therapies, what we need to understand that these have different side effect profile. So while it's very important role for all uh, clinicians and the multidisciplinary team to get themselves uh, acquainted with some of those side effects. In terms of the immune checkpoint inhibitors, if we look at that, for example, headaches, hypophysitis, looking at the skin manifestations like dermatitis, rash or pruritus. Similarly, coming to lung, there could be pneumonitis. Again, liver enzyme abnormalities with hepatitis and things has been reported and has been seen with patients with immune checkpoint inhibitors. Then in the bowels, colitis, diarrhea and nausea has been seen and reported as well. And then fatigue, infusion reactions have been reported with these drugs as well. So in terms of that, we can see that there are multiple side effects in different organs. We can look through these different uh, areas where uh, these patients can have side effects. Skin, endocrine system, liver, gastrointestinal tract, nervous system, eyes, respiratory system, hematopoietic cells. So these are the common uh, events that we talked about, pneumonitis, rash, uh, gastrointestinal side effects we talked about where again colonoscopy would be useful, histology will be important in those sort of things to give us a, a definitive diagnosis that what is going on and, um, uh, and to have a proper treatment accordingly. Early diagnosis and management are essential for immune checkpoint inhibitor therapies. Frequent monitoring and early recognition is key. Patient education and assessment for appropriate signs and symptoms are important. Uh, more sort of adverse events in terms of the most adverse events will be in grade one and two, but in rare cases, they can be life threatening as well. So it's always important at each dose and before each dose, we are monitoring the signs and symptoms of patients so that we know how things have changed over the course of the between uh, last cycle of treatment to this cycle of treatment. Immune related adverse events are well characterized, medically manageable and typically reversible by using established algorithms. In, they include use of steroids and dose interruptions and delays and some cases of grade 3, 4 adverse events are managed by immune modulations or discontinuation. In terms of the clinical implications of immune associated adverse events, so not all adverse events can be managed and some patients may have to discontinue treatment and it is important to understand that in some cases we will need to be discontinuing the treatment. But to give the patient the best chance of therapeutic success, following the management guidelines are important. So this is for example time of resolution of select treatment uh, of the select treatment related adverse events with immune modulating agents. And you can see that for example the skin toxicity time to resolution it can go up to 48 weeks but the normal range can be from 2.6 weeks to 48 weeks. Uh, but overall in terms of the grade uh, 3 to 4 toxicity or in terms of looking at grade, uh, gastrointestinal toxicity for example uh, it is around 1.4 weeks. Similarly endocrine 3.6 weeks, hepatic 2.7 weeks, um, renal 4.7 weeks. So what we can see is that for example within that study that there is different um, sort of uh, time to resolution of select treatments as well. Common side effects associated with T-centric which is greater than 10% will be fatigue, joint pain, diarrhea, nausea, lack of energy, back pain, shortness of breath, decreased appetite, uh, abdominal pain, headache, itching of the skin, fever, 
rash vomiting. So there are a number of side effects, with, but uh, pancreatitis and diabetes occur in less than 1% of patients in these cases. So how do you manage again in terms of specifically looking at T-centric guidelines, grade 2 therapy or infusion interruption is indicated. And they usually respond promptly to symptomatic treatment, example antihistamines, NSAIDs, uh, intravenous fluids, prophylactic medications indicated for less than 24 hours and usually as uh, we talked it's about grade 1 is around 4% of toxicity. Moving to grade 3 then, grade 3 toxicity is uh, prolonged if they are prolonged, uh, example not rapidly responding to symptomatic medications and a brief interruption of infusion, recurrence of symptoms following initial improvement, hospitalization is then indicated and uh, in terms of grade 4 which is life threatening consequences, uh, urgent intervention required. So that is the definition that we use in terms of uh, from grade 2, 3 and grade 4. In terms of the immune related infusion reactions again grade 2 then you interrupt the uh, infusion, uh, initiate aggressive symptomatic treatment uh, as per the guidelines and if it is less than grade 1 then one can restart infusion rate at half that of previous. So, you basically prolong the infusion and uh, the, the rate is, is, is halved. So, the same infusion will be given in um, uh, sort of uh, more time to reduce the risk of those allergic reactions. You will consider oral pre-medication like antihistamines and antipyretic at next cycle and if there is no improvement uh, then treat as grade 3 to 4 event. In grade 3 to 4 event, you will stop infusion, think about initiating aggressive symptomatic treatment, monitor as per local infusion uh, center protocol and evaluate in emergency department or hospital 